Hey folks, so today I wanted to talk about scanning film. So this is a way of taking your um, old-fashioned film 35mm negatives and converting them into a digital format. Now, there are a couple of ways of doing this. Um, you can use a flatbed scanner and you can either scan the negatives with the flatbed scanner. Uh, with Usually you need to use an adapter to hold the negatives. Or you can actually scan the photographs themselves. But when using a flatbed scanner, it's very slow. And the results can vary a lot because of the different kinds of photographs you can get developed. So there's glossy papers, there's matte papers, there's satin papers. So sometimes if that's the only choice you've got, that's all you can do. But we're not looking at that way of doing it today. We're doing the alternative way of doing it, which is using a DSLR. And for that, you will need some form of light source or a light box, um, of which there are numerous ones, um, and some way of uh, securing the film strips and the camera onto being one immovable object so that you can very quickly uh, process them. Now, doing it this way, where using DSLR has many advantages. Um, the main ones of which is you'll get a raw file, um, so you can do post-processing on it, and it's a lot faster. As it's quite a bit of setup, but once it's done, you can just rattle through the pictures every couple of seconds, whereas with the scanner, you put it in, you prepare it, and the scanner will go that's my impression of a scanner. It marks out of 10 in the comments below. Um, <laughs> a scanner will take several minutes per image. So although a scanner is your only option, I'm not going to recommend you do it this way. And I'm going to show you how to do it uh, with your 35mm negatives. Shut up, cat. <laughs> so folks, you're going to need a few things in order to be able to, uh, to do this properly. Now, um, first of all, I'm going to put links to um, Amazon uh, shopping links so you can click on similar items. Depending on the camera you've got, you're going to have to do a little bit of research yourself because I've designed this to work around Fujifilm XS20, XS10 sized cameras. Probably will work with larger ones, but I would recommend using quite a light camera because of this. you'll see that the items are quite small. So. Um, I will try it with other cameras, but I've only done it with the XS20, which is that kind of size camera. So, first things you're going to need, I've got them down here in front of me, is a mini tripod with a ball head. And it's a very specific mini tripod, as you'll see from the description, because it has quarter inch screw threads. And this will become apparent when you see the whole item uh, assembled. So once I've actually cobbled it together and I'll show you it um, towards the end of this being how I've actually assembled it because this is the constituent components of it um, but essentially you are going to attach bits on which is why um, you need to have these quarter inch threads because this tripod you see can go flat like this Um, so that's why it's quite a specific tripod. So I've tried to link very specific things on Amazon links. So you'll have to try and find the same items or you might not get any, any results working. You also need the uh, a, a JJC adapter for the 35mm slides. Now it's a kit that I've linked and it comes with uh, the 35mm adapter. Um, it comes with the slide adapter and it also comes with a little light box. And the light box has a little um, mount on it so that you can mount it on standard quarter inch uh, tripod type mounts. You're also going to need a little extension um, because this is to effectively extend one of the arms of the little tripod and a little flexible uh, arm as well. You're going to need two. Um, this is to actually connect the actual light box so you can adjust its angle in respect to the camera. And lastly, so I have to stretch down here because I couldn't put it on my knee. You're going to need a macro lens. And now I've just got the t a nice cheap TT Artisans uh, macro lens. These are about £100. And this is a 14mm f2.8, but you're probably using it at around about f8. But we'll go into the details of the settings later. So um, essentially that's what you need. And if we now look at assembling 
uh, all the parts together. That was just a cat flying by there. Let's look now at assembling all the parts together. You can see what it actually looks like when I've actually put the items together. We've got the arm, uh, which is on the extension bar at the end of the tripod, which, ex which holds up the, uh, the screen. I and mean, then we can slide the uh, film adapter in. Um, and then we mount the camera on the ball head and we're ready to actually uh, take pictures. So we talked a little bit about the lens. Um, you're going to have to use a macro lens. You can try other lenses, but you need something that's got a very close focus. Um, and usually only macro lenses have that. Um, you've only got a finite amount of space that you can move on the setup that I've kind of put together um, between the actual camera lens and where the light box is. So you've got to sort of mess around with that. So I would imagine between a 40 and a 60 millimeter um, macro lens would be suitable for this. Um, you could use something a bit wider because you could obviously push the camera a little bit closer. Um, but essentially it's going to have to be a macro lens. While you can try autofocus, I don't have an autofocus macro lens so I have to use manual focus. I would probably recommend manual focus because then the camera's not going to hunt. It's just going to take the picture. Turn your focus peaking on, um, use the viewfinder or you can use the view screen and you'll see from the little illustration here um, that it's pretty easy to, to get the focus. You can see the peaking showing up on the 35 millimeter film slide. Uh, and once you've locked the focus, that's it. You're just going to slide them in, take a picture, slide the, slide along and take a picture. You will have to check focus on each one. But again, because you've got the focus peaking on, it's manual. You're going to very quickly see whether it's gone out of focus because there always is a slight chance that when you push the slide adapter along that you're going to knock the uh, positioning off slightly. So you do have to check each shot. But essentially that's all you do. And the slide holder can hold about like six, about five, six negatives. Um, so you just push it through, take a picture, push it through, take a picture. As simple as that. And that's how easy it is. So I think with a manual lens, it's going to be a lot easier to do than messing around with autofocus. So just make sure you've got focus peaking on. So for setting your camera up, you're going to need to set probably around about f8. So you've got uh, quite a deep depth of field. Um, because even on a macro lens, it's quite shallow depth of field even as you stop down and I think the reason I chose f8 is because for a lot of lenses f8 is kind of the sweet spot for sharpness but depending on your macro lens your management vary and you will have to experiment with this um, so on manual focus we're going to set the white balance to auto because you're shooting raw so as long as you're shooting raw the white balance doesn't really matter um, because you can adjust it in post. Again, you kind of have to experiment with it, but you could do white priority or you could do daylight um, or even incandescent lighting. But I, they, I've got some success with daylight um, and auto white balance. And like I say, because it's a raw file, you can uh, process it in post. Um, you can use the camera in matrix or average metering. Um, now the light that I've uh, shown you um, has various settings, so you're going to have to work out which how bright you want it. Obviously, the brighter you get, the warmer it gets, so you can't have your film slides on there too long because it'll warm up and it could damage them, so you don't want them on all the time. Um, but you can brighten the light up to adjust your ISO, but ideally have your ISO at 160 as low as possible, and then you just start to feed them through, as we said earlier, one at a time. So feed them in, take the picture, feed them in, take the picture, remembering to adjust your focus for uh, each slide. And it's as, it's as simple as that. You're literally just loading them into the, uh, the carousel, um, which just locks them in place. What you'll find is that you can't quite frame them up perfectly. You'll get like, the corners and rounded corners. But when you compare them, if you've got the original prints, when you look at them, you'll find that, as I did, that I was actually able to get more on certain borders than I actually they did on the print. So when they go through the original print process, when you get them you know, 20, 30 years ago, when you did your 35 millimeter film, you'd be surprised the extra details that get cropped off that, that aren't. So you're going to lose a little bit around the edges. Um, but 
that's the way it is. That's what we're coming on to next, which is your workflow as to how you're going to process the images once you've actually taken the picture of them. And the beauty is, of course, if you make a mistake and they're blurred, you just go back. It doesn't take long to do. You can review them on the camera in the viewfinder to check the focus. Um, not really that hard. It's so much easier than using a scanner. So lastly, we're coming on to the editing of the images. So you've done your scans, you've got your raw files, and you're going to need to have Lightroom or Capture One or something similar to edit them with. So this is where it gets a bit more complex. So you can save them out as JPEGs um, if you don't want to have a, a, a Lightroom workflow. Um, but it's really difficult without doing editing because the problem with photographing a negative is it comes out as a negative. It look weird. Um, so as, as you can see, I can, when we brought them up on the screen earlier, when we were doing the, uh, the focus peaking, you'll probably notice that it looks nothing like an actual picture. And this is because it's a negative. And I didn't realize how simple it was though in Lightroom. And I, I can't say how you do this in Capture One, but I presume it's similar. You need to look whatever editing software you're using for the curves tool. And you can normally adjust the curves of the RGB, but there'll be an overall, all colors RGB. And essentially the, the, you are reversing the curve. So the default curve will be a slope to the right. So it'll be a, a sort of diagonal line sloping from left to right, from low to high, so that way. And you're gonna, you're gonna invert it. So you're gonna pull the left hand side right up and the right hand side right down. That inverts the image. Effectively you're inverting the image and then it'll all of a sudden look normal. Now you, when you edit it, this way, unless you make a copy of it in Lightroom for editing in Photoshop or something like that, a lot of these sliders will work in reverse. Um, so be mindful when you're doing minor edits that some sliders for like brightening will darken and what have you. It, it, it's a bit odd when you've inverted an image, um, but you'll kind of work it out and you'll get there as to what I mean. Um, but you can, because it's been taken on the Fuji camera, you can apply film simulations. You can do all you would with editing a RAW file, you know, just the contrast, the brightness. Um, if you wish to remove noise, you can do that. If you wish to take it into Photoshop and use the AI to remove, like what I did, I had one picture that had um, discoloring on one side, but I just took it into Lightroom and did generative fill, removed the discoloration, but I left the film grain behind. Um, you might like the, the grainy look that you get, but the, the world is your oyster, as they say. You can do what you want. You can literally just invert it and tweak the brightness so that it looks okay. Or you can go the whole hog and digitally edit it and make it look something much, much better. It will tend to show you just how terrible cameras were back then and how poor film quality was for the kind of cameras a lot of us used. I mean, I say that as somebody who used very simplistic cameras like an Olympus Trip and a Zenit B and a Zenit E, which are the cameras I had. Um, I am actually doing some tests with a, a Fuji ca camera, an 805 ST, I think it is. Um, and I did do some pictures with the um, Fuji lens, which I'm going to show you some of these now. Um, and they were quite soft. Part of that was me, because I used 480 ISO film. Um, but part of that was the fact that it's a f1.4 lens, which is really soft lens. I've done some more, which I'll have to do another video we're using a Helios lens, so it's all down to the lens you use. So some of you will be, who are watching this, may be really good professional photographers who work with film long before um, digital ever existed, and you might have had really good equipment, and you might get fantastic results straight out of the camera, as it were, to coin a phrase, um, because you will be almost taking your film prints and turning them into digital and then straight out of camera. Um, that was a bad joke, really. Uh, didn't really work but essentially that's it you can do what you want with them in Lightroom you can do very light edits or you can use the magic of AI and sharpen an image up that was quite soft remove the grain make it look modern add a different grain as I say it's just down to your editing skills what you want to do um, and that's it um, it's really straightforward to use these and uh, I 
been spending time working out what to do, I was like thinking, am I going to have to buy a £300 flatbed scanner? Is that the best way to do it? And then I came across these, and you'll see that all the components I've listed in the description below, if you exclude the lens, you're talking about £120 to buy everything. Most people have tripod heads, so won't need that. Some people might even have that little tripod, it's popular or something similar. So as a photographer, it's entirely possible that you'll have all the components that I've shown you, and that all you need is to get the little mini light box, which is, I think, about £37. Um, so you'll just have to see what you've got in your photographer box of goodies, uh, which we all have them, um, drawers full of bits we've collected over the years, but I digress. So I hope everyone found this video useful. I hope it's going to encourage you to dig out your old 35mm negatives. Enjoy using your modern DSLR to re-photograph them. And then look at pictures that were taken so many years ago. I mean, it evoked so many memories for me doing that because often they get put into an album and chucked away. And I've actually lost some of my negatives from, from a holiday as a child to um, Italy and I wish I did have them uh, but they're 110 and I still have to see if I can get a 110 adapter um, although I might be able to sort of use the adapter I've got I think it would probably work because it'll hold them still so as long as it'll hold them you, they're just pressed onto the light box and it should work so although this is designed for 35 millimeter film there are different adapters that you can get that I haven't really looked into but there's obviously the slide adapter, 110, and I think that oh, there was another format, I can't remember what it's called, like an instant format of film, and of course 120 film, which I don't think this will do 120, um, but there are other light boxes on the market, but I don't know if they work like this one. So it's quite a complex area, as you can see, so I'm just focusing on 35mm film, which is the most common format. So, I will catch you all later, folks. If you did enjoy the video, please remember drop a like and subscribe for more videos in the future. And apologies that I haven't done a video for a while. I've just been manic busy with work. As, as you know, I'm not a full-time YouTuber. I have a full-time job, which takes up a lot of time and I can't always get the videos done. So I know I haven't done one for a month, so I'm really sorry. Um, but uh, hopefully this one will make up for it. Anyway, I'll catch you all later, folks. Bye.